Joining us now, Steve Bannon, fresh out of prison, where he has been for the last four months because he refused to comply with Democrat lawfare, former White House chief strategist, host of the War Room podcast. Steve, uh, we appreciate you joining us. We're glad you're out. When you hear Democrats argue that if Trump wins, he'll put his political adversaries in prison and enact a lawfare against them. As a guy who was actually put in prison, that has to be one of the craziest arguments, most dishonest arguments you have ever heard. You went to prison to stand up for Trump. What is your feeling one day out? And what do you think about that argument that Democrats are trying to trot out there? Well, you know, they'll lie about everything. And, and, and when I was in federal prison, you've got J6ers there, but you have people that prayed the rosary in front of uh, abortion centers that are there. You've got, when I was there, I think two or three women in their 70s got sentenced to, to and not camps, they got actually sentenced to federal prisons, low security, but the low security prisons are very dangerous. So no, and President Trump, people forget, President Trump's going to be uh, sentenced on 26 November, and Hershaw's going to send him to jail. There's no doubt it's going to give him some prison. Now, I think that's going to be reversed, but these people are out of control. They created 34 phony, 34 felonies. They're going to try to send President Trump, and Jack Smith is not backing off uh, not backing off in D.C. Remember, Jamie Raskin, just on Bill Maher, Jamie Raskin is out there saying that uh, they're not going to certify Trump's election on January 6th in, in, the, in the Capitol if the Democrats take the House by, by even one vote. So the lawfare is their specialty, and they've used it to the max. It's not anywhere near what they will do, but uh, that's why tomorrow is so important. And, and people got to understand they're co- still coming after President Trump. They have not really eased up on the on the gas at all. Steve, it's Buck. Uh, appreciate you being with us, and you know we've been rooting for you the whole time uh, since you not only were in the big house, but since they were threatening to send you away. And uh, we, we respect the fact that you stand with your principles and, and refuse to bend the knee to the witch hunt committee. We all know we could sit here and get into and you know this better than anybody. Democrats somehow don't go to prison for this. Don't go to don't even face charges really for this. Right. The whole thing is just a total scam and, and a sham. But it sounds like you're warning everybody, even if we have a really good day tomorrow the fight is going to escalate and could get even crazier in some ways after the election. Am I, am I reading that right? But, but look, you were at the CIA. You, you see what's happened to the Defense Department, to the CIA, to the Justice Department, to the FBI, these institutions. If you think that, and we have to do this, this is first, we must win in the bigger amount we get to win tomorrow. And the, and the early voting numbers look great for us, but it's not enough. They haven't built a firewall. We must deliver. People must be forced multipliers. But don't think it ends there. That's where it really starts. They're not prepared to say, this is great. You know, you got more people that turned up in Wisconsin. You won Arizona, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. It's great for you. They're going to fight us with every tool they have in the bag. And we have to be prepared to be relentless and say, no, we won an election. We've proven we won an election. We want this certified. President Trump is going to be inaugurated on the 20th of January at high noon. We're going to take over and get our people, 3,000 of our people are going to go on day one. The other 1,000 are going to get Senate confirmed, and we're getting them as quickly as possible. And we're going to have a tremendous 100 days. But people think if they, you think they're going to congratulate you at 5 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday for winning this, you've got another thing coming. So I tell everybody, just get ready to hunker down the same fight and determination and relentlessness that got us the changing, you know, with the voter registrations that changed the architecture of the electorate and then went out and actually won, I think, in many regards, the early vote and not allowing them to build firewalls is the same that's going to deliver tomorrow. This is a working class and middle class populist nationalist uprising. And people just have to understand we have to take it through to make sure President Trump is inaugurated on the 20th and don't lose faith. Just understand you're fighting for your country against the, some of the most powerful institutions in world history. Steve, if we've got people out there who haven't voted early yet, Buck and I both voted early for Trump. We've told everybody we can get as much of that uh, uh, of that bulwark out there as you possibly can to help Trump. What is the importance? You just said it. Basically, the entire country's at stake. But you know well the first term what Trump was able to accomplish. What can he accomplish in the second term? And for anybody out there that hasn't voted yet, 
what charge would you put on them for what this second term can can accomplish? Well, in, in the second term, think about what's going to happen within the first 10 days of his inauguration. The debt ceiling, we hit the debt ceiling. The tax cuts that drove his economic plan so well in 18 and 19 uh, are, are reversed, right, or rescinded. And we're not going to pass an omnibus bill on December 20th. The government's going to run out of money. And so we've got to address the deficit. Elon Musk is going to come in and help him with that. But he has three massive financial issues that will set the direction for the country economically maybe for a decade. That's in the first 10 days. Oh, and by the way, we've got to commence immediately not just building the wall, but the st- commencement of the deportation of 10 to 15 million uh, you know, illegal aliens, which Tucker Carlson was just on my show today. He says he it's the greatest, uh, the, the, the worst thing that's happened to the country since Pearl Harbor. So um, this this is all in his first week, and we're going to get all these criminals, the criminal elements, hundreds of thousands of people. What he has to address, besides the fact of then getting proper adjudication investigations of FBI, DOJ, CIA, Defense Department, all of it, which will be quite complicated, but has to be done. And it totally transparently so the American people can understand what happened to the CIA, understand what happened to the FBI, understand what happened to DOJ. That's all right out of the box. So, folks, if, if you want more of the same and only getting worse, then stay home because you're going to get more of the same and you're, you're going to get less and less economic opportunities, less and less freedom. So if you want that, if you're fine with techno-feudalism, hey, they'll serve it up to you. Uh, as much as you want. Now, if you want freedom and liberty and economic opportunities and to really have this country back to its revolutionary roots, not only do you got to get out tomorrow, you have to be a force multiplier. We need everybody in your audience to take us because, hey, we have to hold the house. If they take that, if Jamie Raskin and Nancy Pelosi and Hakeem Jeffries are running the house, they're going to want not certify Trump on, on the 6th, and then when he actually takes office with power through that, they're going to, you know, Andy Big said the other day in my show, they're already drafting up articles of impeachment if they, if they take control by one, one, uh, one, one seat, one House seat. So, folks, tomorrow is everything, and you've got to get out there. But don't think the game is over after that. You're not going to be able to rest, and I would love to tell you that it's all going to be great in the sunlit uplands, but it's not. This is just the, 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 the table stakes for taking our country back. It's going to take 10 or 20 years. We didn't get into this problem overnight. Okay? We didn't, the, the greatest country in the world did not get into this situation overnight. And we have to understand that it's going to take us a decade or longer to get out. Now, listen, when you have Elon Musk and Megyn Kelly and Tucker Carlson and Nicole Shanahan and Vivek Ramaswamy and all these new people coming towards you know, David Sachs, we have all these new people coming to this movement. We're at the top of the first inning. You know, Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, Danica Patrick, you're seeing, you're, and you see African American men and Hispanic men refuse to vote for her. That's why these numbers are so good. This is a new coalition. We're at the top of the first inning, but we're going to have to power through this. And remember, if we don't quit, we win. This is why I went to prison. I, I, I served as a naval officer in my 20s under the story. I'm proud to serve in the 70s, in my 70s, in a federal prison. And if you're not prepared, to be sent to prison, you're not going to be at the forefront of this at the forefront of this fight because they are going to look to send us to prison. And so they're tr- going to send, try to send President Trump. This is the top of the first thing. Tomorrow's a huge day, but it doesn't end tomorrow. It really commences tomorrow. We're speaking to Steve Bannon. He is the host of the War Room podcast. Uh, Steve, y- you mentioned this toward the end there. What is it like to be a political prisoner, which is what you were, in America in 2024? Well, look, federal prison is, is, is tough. I mean, there's, there's a very violent place. they got a lot of gangs. They've got, particularly a swamp with drugs, this drug called K2. There are many, many good people there. But you've got a lot of, uh, you've got a lot of the foreign nationals that are now have come to the borders that are there. You've got very violent gangs. You've got stabbings. You've got fights. Uh, and like I said, it's a wash with drugs. Uh, the, the police officers, many of the police officers there are excellent and really try to help the inmates try to keep order. Many of the inmates are excellent people. They're there for various reasons, but they're trying to sort their lives out to get back out. Their families have been devastated by this. You know, they, that's one of the reasons they hate uh, Kamala Harris, because she's kind of the queen of mass incarcerations. I could tell them in prison. 
but it's tough, and people have to understand it's 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 meant to be tough, and it's tough. But you can power through. For me, it was empowering. Just thinking, hey, I'm 70 years old. This experience is totally unique. If I power through this. You know, Nancy Pelosi, I'll never bend the knee to Nancy Pelosi. I'll never bend the knee to Jamie Raskin. I'll never bend the knee to these radicals. And so, you know, for me, it turned out to be great. But people got to understand, they are set to send a lot of people to prison. They already have the J6 people, these people praying to Rosie outside of abortion centers, parents that tried to stand up about what's happening in the school. So folks have to understand, this is their, their, their heart, this is hardball, and they play smash now. Talking to Steve Bannon, fresh out of prison, being willing to stand up to the Democrat lawfare. How big of a deal? You were there in 16 when so many people were stunned that Trump won. I think Buck agrees with me, too. Trump is going to win tomorrow if everybody shows up. I don't just want to win, though. I want the popular vote. we got to make this too big to rig. What would winning the popular vote mean if everybody out there shows up, gets their friends and families out there? How much of a statement would that be? Hang on for one second. Let's move back to 16. Remember, 16, you can make the argument she lost it as much as we won it, right? Because it was her arrogance and not going to Wisconsin, not going to Michigan. The, this kind of arrogance of Robbie Luke and these guys that they didn't need uh, to, to address the issues of the country. Uh, we snuck up on them. Remember, we were three and a half points down the night before, and media had already written us off. When the, when the exit polls came out at 5 o'clock, she was winning a 350 to 400 electoral vote victory that people had voted for Trump were still too shy to tell people they had voted for Trump. The, the exit polls at 5 o'clock had us blown out of the water, and we won. This time we didn't sneak up on This time they've been waiting, they, and they've got all their force line. This victory is orders of magnitude more powerful. And remember, everybody abandoned Trump. This really comes from a grassroots, a grassroots perspective. So that's why this is so important, and that's why they're so dug in. Also the fact that... Of look at just look at your show the last couple of years. Look at what we've learned. Look at what the, the people understand the issues with the oligarchs in Silicon Valley, with what's happening on Wall Street, with what's happening in the economy, and the 15 million that Wall Street and the political class have allowed to come in and, and ruin our country. This is we understand the stakes are so much higher, but they are ready. So tomorrow, I would love to win the popular vote. I would love to win the Mexico and Virginia, New Hampshire. But hey, here's what I know: we have to win. We have to win 270. So that means, you know, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, you have to represent. You've done such a good job on the early vote. You must represent tomorrow. And then we got to pick off either Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, maybe Michigan. If we run the tables and get over 300, they're never going to sit there and go, oh, this is a mandate. Rachel Maddie's people, they're going to go to war with us immediately. That we stole this, that Trump's still an insurrectionist. He's going to go to prison in Rikers Island. You wait. The firestorm when we win will be as bad as if we lost. And people just have to gird yourself with this. They're not going to sit there and tell us, so we win the, we'll have better uh, data to say we won the popular vote. We, you know, he got 350 things. We won New Hampshire, won Virginia. It won't make a difference to them. They have the strongest, most powerful apparatus in the greatest and strongest, most powerful country in the history of the earth. And they ain't about to, 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 to give it up to a bunch of guys in red ball caps that happen to get more votes than they do. That's what we got to gird our lungs with. That's what we got to get focused on. Steve, we appreciate you. We're glad we're on your side, that you're on our side. Thank you for all you do, and thanks for joining us here on the show. And hopefully we can uh, at least tweet at each other in celebration after Tuesday, even if it's short-lived, before we have to take on the next round of madness. Guys, we got a long fight ahead of us. Glad you're in the foxholes with us. Absolutely, sir. That's Thank Steve you. Steve Bannon, I think, going to be in the history books a hero for standing up to Democrat lawfare. 